And I think, again, continuing on with the microbes and the carbon concept, you know, everybody has these crazy ideas that, for example, uh, I'm just going to throw this out and I hope I'm not proven, well, I hope I am proven wrong later, but I think I'm right right now. You know, that you can stick stuff in the soil and it's going to go into the plant and it's going to make better terpenes. You know, you put terpenes in the soil and somehow the plant takes them up and they make terpenes. No, that's not how it works. <laughs> you know, the, the, the plant makes what it needs from what's given it by the microbes. And so the microbes take whatever you put into that soil, they break it down and they, and they put a charge on it because the only way these things can go into the plant is to have a charge on them. And so the microbes are in control of putting the charge on, converting the organic molecule into an inorganic molecule so that it can go in. And, and if you don't have the right microbes and the right ratios, you're all messed up. So uh, uh, Tate mentioned the idea of bacterial dominance or fungal dominance or bacterial balance, fungal balance. Uh, it's a very, very important concept in the soil food web because what we've discovered over, the, over the, the, the years of studying the soil food web is that there are two kinds of nitrogen, uh, NH4 and, and NO, NO3. Nitrate, uh, nitrate and nitrate. And, and a, nitrite or ammonium. Or ammonium. Uh, ammonium. Uh, and the ammonium is preferred by one plant kind of plant and the nitrates are preferred by other plants. And so what you need to do is figure out what your plant likes. Which fertilizer does your plant like? Does it like the nitrogen that's in ammonium form or in nitrate form? And the way you do that, and that all has to do with the soil food web uh, for reasons which you can pick up in the book, but in short, if you've got the right mixture, the things that are pooped out by the nematodes in the protozoa who are eating the bacteria and the fungi are always in ammonium form. But if you've got nitrogen fixing bacteria in your soil, they convert that into nitrates. And that relates to a pH situation because you don't normally have a lot of nitrate fixing bacteria if your pH is low. If it's above seven, you're going to have a lot of them. If it's below seven, you're going to have fewer of them. And so uh, you can tweak what kind of nitrogen you're going to give your plant by making sure that your soil is either fungally dominated or bacterially dominated. Long story short, that was you can do that. And Dr. Elaine Ingham has determined that there are certain uh, ratios that plants like. And so the general rule is an annual plant that's in the ground for less than a year likes bacterially dominated soil. And you go for the bacterially dominated stuff. It turns out that cannabis is an annual plant and it likes bacteria. Now, plants that are in the ground longer than a year that normally have much tougher t you know, tissue, bark, right. uh, stem, those like the fungally dominated soil. And so you go for fungally dominated inputs or f inputs that are going to increase the fungal domination in your soil. Now, it has been studied to the point now where, again, I think Dr. Elaine Ingham has suggested that you want to have a ratio of somewhere between 0.6 and 1. Yep. What is, how does that correlate, just so that you understand? If you are in an old growth forest, the ratio of fungi to bacteria are somewhere in the vicinity of 50 to 1. 50,000 50, to 1. 50,000 uh, fungi to 1 bacteria. Mm -hmm. If you're on the other side of the spectrum, the beginning of the system, you know, the, the, the beach, and then the life starts to form, that's almost 100% bacteria. It is 100% bacterial, and very slowly the fungal move in. So when we're talking 0.6 to 1, you know, we're not talking way the heck over on the heavy side. And so what you want to be able to do is have a product where you can measure and adjust and get to the ratio that your plant wants. And again, with cannabis, apparently it's uh, apparently uh, 0.6 to 1. 0.6 to uh, 1. And these are the kinds of things that you put in uh, and you can use the accuracy of the ability to be able to measure in a way that you can't with the liquids. Because you don't really know what's in that liquid, and what the concentrations are, and how it applies. This stuff you understand. So it's very important. You know, microbe to fungi ratio dictates all the nutrients that are going to get cycled. Even the stretch of the apical meristem Absolutely. is highly dictated. Yeah. If you have a, a plant that should be bacterially dominant, and it ends up becoming fungally dominant, your apical meristem is going to slow down dramatically and your plants aren't going to be stretching and growing the same. So what Jeff's saying is 
you know, a really good tool to be able to help you achieve maximum performance inside of your garden. You know, knowledge is power. Right. Highly recommend checking out the Keto Life or the Teeming with Microbes right. book. Yeah. Well, and, and the, keto- the Keto Life stuff as well. Right. And <laughs> test your soils. I mean, there are all sorts of different kinds of tests. You should certainly do an NPK test so yes. you know what's going on. Yep. You should certainly be doing a soil food web test uh, so that you know whether your soils have a ratio that's where you want to have it. Uh, and do you recommend like compost tea growers to keep microscopes around I and certainly do. get very I used s- to the whole process? I certainly do. You should you should either be able to test it quickly uh, or, or you know which either means that you're close to a soil food web lab and you can get it there quickly uh, or having uh, your own microscope. Maybe even take the course from the soil food web people so you can learn how to how to distinguish between the fungi and the bacteria. They're pretty easy to do but 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 figure out how to do the count on a grid. Uh, it's very, very important to have as much knowledge as you possibly can, particularly, particularly if you are a commercial grower. I mean, my goodness gracious, data is power. Data. Get as much of it as you can. Data is the sales pitch these days. I, I, I see a huge transition happening in the industry where claims and statements are going to the wayside Mm -hmm. and now it's data and facts Mm -hmm. and actual real life statistics right right check us out at ketolifesupply.com